looking at price takers and price makers and what separates price takers from price makers but I love this picture here um, because it really illustrates um, the uh, power really <laughs> of uh, price makers and um, how little power um, price takers have so you need to be able to understand the factors that affect the ability of a firm to uh, fix the price of a product and understand really what price makers and price takers are. So firstly, let's go through some key terms. So price taker is um, a firm or customer. It can, we often refer to price takers in terms of um, firms, um, but it can be customers and it can be employees as well. We look at price takers when we're looking at um, labor markets as well. Um, and these are the firm and the customers are not influential enough to affect the price of the item. So usually they're just um, very small in the market, very small share of the market. Whereas price maker is a firm or a customer who is influential enough to affect the price of an item. And what determines whether they can influence it or affect it, it's two things really, I think. It's the size of the firm in comparison to the market, so basically market share, and whether there are any substitutes for the product. Okay, so if we look at our two extremes of market structure, perfect competition and monopoly, and um, we just go through some of the um, the components of these two and what separates them. So in terms of barriers to entry, we know that perfect competition have uh, no barriers to entry or very low barriers to entry, and mar the monopolies have such high barriers to entry that um, there's only going to be one firm in the market. But with perfect competition, there's no barriers to entry, so there's a large amount of firms in the market. And therefore, the market share for perfect competition is very low, whereas the market share for monopoly is very high, to the extreme that it is 100% in a pure monopoly. We know that there are lots of examples of markets where firms can exert what we think of as being monopoly power. You know, if they have over 25%, we start to get market share, that is, we start to get a little bit worried, and over 40%, we start to think of them as quite a dominant position. So the product that in perfect competition is being sold is a homogenous product, meaning that the, it's perfectly identical um, to other products in the market um, uh, that are sold by other substitute firms. There's you know, no difference. The, the consumer doesn't really care really who they're buying it from. They just want the, the lowest price because everyone's selling the same product. Whereas with, in a monopoly, because there's only one producer and seller of this product, it therefore is a unique product. Um, and so in um, perfectly competitive markets, because the products that this particular firm is selling are homogenous to all the other kind of firms that are in the same market, there are many substitutes. Whereas because the monopolies product is unique, there are no substitute products. So this is the comparison and this is what happens to the market. So this one, I'm gonna get my pen out is here this is the market position for both of them actually perfectly competitive market and a uh, monopoly but this one represents the uh, demand curve um, for a monopoly whereas this one represents the demand curve for a perfectly competitive um, firm uh, sorry a firm in a perfectly competitive market I should say so we see that the monopoly actually can make a decision uh, because uh, they're this supply curve is not really going to be here because the monopoly can decide do we want to supply at this point or do we want to supply at this point they've got that decision therefore they are what we call a price maker um, they can't decide on the quantity they're going to sell and the price but they can decide on one of them whereas the perfectly competitive firm they literally can't decide on the price so they just have to take the market price Okay, so in summary, um, what affects the ability um, to fix the price of its products? It's its market share, really. If it's got a very, very small um, market share and it's selling um, a homogenous product, it's not going to have any power over the price. Um, and if, you know, we're going to see in the perfectly competitive presentation or presentation on perfectly competitive markets that if... Um, 
uh, a, path, a firm in a perfectly competitive market leaves the industry, it has very little, if just one of them leave, it has very little effect on the market, so much so that it, we could say it's negligible, it doesn't have it doesn't have an effect on the supply, so it doesn't change the price very much. So again, very much they have to take the market price, they can't influence it even if they leave the market, whereas a monopoly can.